So increase in nitrogen assimilation. Okay, what does this mean for the turf? Okay, and guys, this is really really complex. And the only reason I have this stuff down on the slide is so you can see that I'm not making it up. Okay, but but big point here, big picture is whether you apply nitrate, whether you apply ammonium, which is NH4, or whether you apply urea, which eventually turns into ammonium, it all turns into ammonia in the chloroplast. Okay, and here's the kicker. Our nitrogen that we feed the plant is useless until we fix it into an organic compound, meaning we add a carbon to it. Okay, and these ammonia levels are actually toxic to the cell. So the goal of the plant is when it takes up the nitrogen, it wants to turn it into an organic compound as fast as possible. Okay, and what allows it to do that is glutamate, glutamic acid. That is that is your bottleneck. If you do not, your plant was not able to produce glutamic acid, or we did not have glutamic acid at sufficient levels in the chloroplast, you would not be able to use the nitrogen that you're giving your plant. And furthermore, it would be toxic. Okay, and the plant has ways where it can it can cycle the the, the glutamic acid uh, to the cytoplasm and back into the chloroplast as it needs it. So there's always these ways. And again, I just want to put this down on paper to demonstrate it. There's always these ways and enzymes the plant able to to use and produce. To, to allow the plant to get the amino acid where it needs to be, but it has to be there. So what's our takeaways? So ammonia is the end source available to the plants, regardless of what input you use, whether it's nitrate, ammonium, whether it's urea, it all turns into ammonia in the chloroplast. Ammonia is toxic, and we have to put a carbon to it as soon as possible, and glutamic acid is necessary for this conversion. That's really neat. So again, that's science, that's abstract. Let's bring Kurt in now to talk with some of the superintendents about what this has meant for them. Thanks, George. Um, yeah, this is, a, this is a really interesting concept, I think. Uh, as, a, as, a golf, as a former golf course superintendent growing turf grass around uh, Columbus, Ohio uh, for, for many years, and, and I think a, a lot of guys who maintain cool season turf have been through this type of, of scenario before. Uh, coming out of spring where, where the temperatures warm up, you get some favorable weather, and, and the turf really starts to grow. and You get great color and, and things are going gangbusters. And then all of a sudden, maybe it's late April, maybe it's uh, first of May, you go through a stretch of really cold, cloudy, uh, rainy weather. And the turf kind of goes in, in, a, in a bit of a tailspin. It starts getting very chlorotic and, and just weak looking. And I, I always attributed that, you know, that chlorotic the yellow appearance to, all right, well, you know, there, it's a lot of cloudy weather here. The plant's not building chlorophyll and keeping up with the growth. But, you know, bringing to light the fact that, that a, um, uh, a, a low supply of glutamic acid could result in, in uh, keeping that plant from converting inorganic nitrogen into a carbon form, and, and uh, even more so, a buildup of that ammonium nitrogen in the plant being toxic to the plant, you can see where with a downturn in weather and a cool, cloudy weather where the plant may not be able to produce glutamic acid like it should, and, and you have this buildup of, of uh, ammonium nitrogen, especially when you have a high intake of nitrogen early on in that season with the, with the previous um, uh, good, good weather. And so uh, I think that's that, that's that's interesting, and and that downturn in turf could be coming from that 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 ammonium toxicity as as well. So um, not that it's not that it's a cataclysmic event. Um, it's gonna it's probably not gonna cause a, a a great loss of turf. But what we're trying to do here is increase uh, growth efficiency and 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 and, and uh, physiological efficiency in the plant and and anytime we can avoid these peaks and valleys of growth that's going to that's going to impact the plant in terms of uh, having uh, down down the road having better carbohydrate reserves in, in general so uh, that's my thoughts there and now I'd like to bring on Brent from from Mayfield Sand Ridge to talk a little bit about the first time that, that you use uh, our foliar pack slash ENP products. And I believe it was uh, a similar type of situation as what I, what I described. So uh, Brent, if you can chime in. Yeah, sure. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. Uh, yeah, we, we first started using uh, foliar pack 
in uh, the spring of 2012. It was one of those years we, we actually got off to one of our quickest starts. We typically airify mid-April, but this uh, this year in particular in 2012, we were able to airify in uh, March. And I mean, it was one of the warmest marches in history for Cleveland, Ohio. And airify and everything was great. About a week later, we got four inches of snow. Uh, five weeks later, we still had snow flurries and stuff. And, and basically what we were seeing was, I mean, what Kurt was describing. It was chlorotic. We weren't getting growth. And I, I, it didn't matter what I put down. I, I was not seeing a, a response. So just happened to have an appointment with the uh, Advanced Turf Solutions rep that day. And we're looking at things. And he's like, would you be interested in trying our, our product line? And I said, well, I'm going out tomorrow with a spray. If you can have it here by 7 tomorrow, I, I'll, I'll use it. So he left right then and went and grabbed the product, and, and we used it. And, uh, and that, that's sort of how we got started. It was you know, one of those cold springs. And, and we have L93 creeping bent grass, and we're about 10 miles south of Lake Erie. So we, we stayed cold you know, for a while. I mean, it, it's June, we'll still have frost up this way. So it's, I, I've seen a big improvement with, uh, you know, the turf strength and color in the spring since we started using the Minos. 